To the news now, President Biden is expected to ask Congress to fund a new aid, pa aid package for Ukraine today. In scheduled remarks from the White House this morning, two sources tell NBC News the president will lay out the details of a, quote, massive request, which is intended to last through September. The U.S. has already provided Ukraine with more than $3 billion in aid since the invasion began, including an $800 million package announced last week week. Following that spending, President Biden said the White House had nearly run out of funding authorized by Congress. Meanwhile, according to the Pentagon, Ukrainian troops now have more than half of the 90 howitzers the U.S. pledged to send. Is that munitions continue to flow into Ukraine, uh, that the United States is, uh, is helping coordinate. We know they're, they're expending rounds every single day of all different types and calibers. Uh, and we're doing everything we can. The flow continues to make sure that they, that they can stay in the fight. That comes as Russia continues to escalate its rhetoric. Yesterday, President Putin warned of, quote, lightning fast retaliation should the West interfere in Ukraine. Let's bring in former NATO Supreme Allied Commander, retired four-star Navy Admiral James Tefridis. He is Chief International Security and Diplomacy Analyst for NBC News and MSNBC. And U.S. National Editor at the Financial Times, Ed Luce, is with us. Also here with us in Washington, Washington Bureau Chief for USA Today, Susan Page. Uh, nice to have you all with us. Joe, uh, in Ukraine again, they are holding out in that steel plant, but I don't know how much longer yeah. they can. Yeah, it, 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 it's remarkable, a remarkable courage. You know, I was watching uh, yesterday uh, Admiral Bill Clinton speak. Reminded me of Newt Gingrich one time coming back when they were negotiating when the government was shut down. And Gingrich said, you know, I've never seen anything like this guy. He, 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 he asks you, he, he makes a demand, you give him everything he demands, and he's still sitting there just shaking his head. And you actually feel bad that you have just given him <laughs> everything he's asked for. It, it, apparently, uh, Bill Clinton and uh, uh, President Zelensky went to the same school of negotiations because <laughs> Zelensky constantly talking about what the United States has not done for him. And uh, here we have $3 billion already, 300 million more probably coming his way. The United States, what it's done is nothing short of extraordinary uh, Julia Yaffe had, uh, I thought, a wonderful piece yesterday that talking about just Zelensky is there's still a bitterness towards the West at the same time, uh, even they recognize uh, how much the United States has done. Uh, but the Biden administration not even rolling their eyes. So they understand uh, they understand the constant complaints about the West from from Zelensky. But I'm just I would like you to let the American people know right now, those watching this morning, um, just how much the United States has done to keep Ukraine in the fight uh, and, and what this new aid package means. It's an enormous step. And, and really, if you look back to, say, World War II, and you look at what the United States was doing for a very beleaguered, a very uh, encircled uh, United Kingdom, um, this is really beginning to hit those levels. And in fact, we're hearing historical echoes, as you know, Joe, of the Lend Lease program, which was kind of the cornerstone of what Franklin Delano Roosevelt did for Winston Churchill. Um, we are in that same mode here with uh, our friends in Ukraine. And I think the stakes are equally high. So um, we can do this. Let's also recall from those days, once you get the arsenal of democracy, as it's been called, our, uh, our ability to produce real combat capability, once you get it rolling, watch out. And so, A, we can do this. B, it's the right thing to do. And, and back to our dear mutual friend, Madeleine Albright, uh, one of the last conversations I had with her um, early in this year was talking about NATO and the NATO role in all of this. You know, Madeline effectively wrote the strategic plan for NATO in 2010. Go back and read it. It holds up pretty well. And she said even then, before the invasion, 
in the end, this is going to be about our ability to put weapons in the hands of Ukrainians. Prescient comment. We're doing it right. It's the right thing to do.